Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Winter W. I'm your host today, Rob Medina, and I thank you very much for joining me here today because today I'm reviewing the movie White Tailed. And this is a film that I had not heard about before, but once I got some info about the movie, I saw that the actor Billy Blair was in there, and I was curious to check it out because he was in a movie that I just reviewed rather recently called Cherokee Creek. And if you have not seen the review that I've done for that film, I make sure I recommend I meant to say you guys check it out. I'll make sure I have the i card for you guys to click on. But I had loved what he'd done in that movie. And that movie is definitely more of a horror slasher comedy film. And I, I love that movie. I thought he was great in it. So I was curious to see what he was going to do in a different type of uh, genre here in the th in the thriller genre where it's a much more serious movie, a much more darker film. And clearly he's playing a much more darker character. And I was intrigued to see what he was going to do. But I will point out that I am not going to get into any spoilers for this movie because I figure that the less you know about the film, the better off you'll be as you see the, the way the story unfolds. That takes a rather unique turn as far as the direction of the story that I really was very invested in uh, upon watching it for, my, for the first time. So no spoilers in this review, but I definitely will be getting to the plot. And of course, I'll be getting to my positives and then my negatives and then, of course, my ratings. The story of Whitetail follows a broken family of Donnie Mann, his father, and uncle as they embark on a weekend hunting trip. Donnie's mother had recently died of an overdose and the trio hoped to get away to spend some time in nature and clear their heads. Instead, they find a mysterious man shot in the stomach and clutching onto a backpack full of money. A southern gothic thriller with flaring tempers and work relationship, the story takes place over one day and one night in the brush land of West Texas. So start off with my positives. The movie is written and directed by Derek Presley, who I think did a really good job in pacing the film in a rather slow, methodical pace here. Now, when I say that, it's not to say that it's boring, because it isn't boring. I was not bored with this movie at all. Um, but I just know that it's not going to be for everybody, because if you're expecting a, a fast-paced movie that just gets from point A to point B at, at a certain pace, you're not going to get this out of this movie. When you have the time to spend with the characters and understand what they're going through and understand where they're coming from and the decisions that they're making that you think is coming off one way and then as the film progresses you start to understand the complexities behind them that gives you a, a different perspective of them and you understand at least when the film ends how who these guys really are and the, 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 the struggles that they have to go through internally and having to deal with these responsibilities that they may not be prepared for or never wanted to want to deal with in the first place because they're the ones that put themselves in that situation to begin with. So there's a lot that goes on with this movie that I think did a really good job in opening up some some parts of these characters for you to really understand. And in some ways, you have to figure out the rest of it for yourself, but you have an idea of what, to figure out what was really going on in, in areas of their lives that you're not necessarily exposed to, but you have an idea where, where they're coming from to get a better understanding and understand the choices that they make, have some severe consequences because it literally is a life and death situation for them. So you also get to understand too, when it comes to the the complexity is about certain characters, especially when it comes to the villains, the two bottom brothers played by uh, Jason and um, Jason uh, Douglas, and I meant to say Jason Cavillo. The two brothers in this movie, although they don't really have m many scenes together, but you hear these stories about one brother played by Jason Cavillo, who plays the character of Ricky Bottom. The, the story that you are hearing about him, it's you can clearly see this guy is a loose cannon. This is a guy that you don't want to mess with. This is a guy you don't want... You don't want to be on his bad side because he's just wired a certain way. And his older brother, Davey, he's always the one that kept him in check because Davey showed a, a sympathetic side of him that he truly connected with. And his younger brother obviously loved him, respected him, and was willing to do anything for his brother. He worshipped his brother, you can just tell. And the fact that, without spoiling anything here, you can see what certain decisions that were made had some serious consequences for this character, uh, Ricky, to go and take this uh, path he wants to take, or he's going to take rather, that's going to put everyone else in danger. So there is a level of, of concern that is that, that that goes higher and higher as the film progresses because of something that has happened in this film without getting to spoilers. But I will also want to point out too that the relationship that you have with uh, Tom and his son Donnie, um, considering that his son is autistic in this movie, you see that he just did not have the patience to deal with his son's autism and his and his uh, and his brother-in-law Frank, who um, is kind of been there for the family uh, through those tough times because his sister uh, Tom's wife uh, had died of a drug overdose. You can clearly tell that she definitely she definitely needed help, 
and Tom wasn't there to help her out, especially considering that the the conditions that her that their son have that requires a lot of patience, and he just did not have it. And now that he's forced into the situation where he has to take care of his son and he has to give him the time of the day, it's something he just doesn't want to deal with. He's going to go about it handling his way because he just doesn't understand. So I like that aspect of the character too. And there's a lot more you get to learn about the character as the story progresses, where you really understand where he's coming from. And again, whether you agree with him or not, you just understand that point of view because it just comes from a man who just did not have the patience and just did not understand the the severity of uh, having a child with autism. Now, I've never been around a lot of people who did have autism. I've been fr I've been working with people whose children did have it, and they've heard they've they've told me stories I meant to say of how difficult it can because there are different levels of autism in terms of like um, how it affects each child. And I was not aware of that until I had these conversations with them. So I don't know what type of autism this uh, the character Donnie had in the movie played by Dash. But from what I can gather from what I, what was explained to me on how, you know, my, my former co-workers uh, stories and telling me on how their children uh, behave under certain situations, I got I seem to understand wh what um, what Dash was doing here. And it seemed rather authentic, at least to me from what I understand. But again, I, this is coming from a guy who just was never really around anybody who had autism to fully understand and comprehend the amount of responsibilities, the, the amount of patience that it requires. But I can, but when you watch this movie, you can clearly see that that has a major impact on the relationship with Donnie and his uh, father, Tom, and also their, the, his, Tom, Donnie's uncles too. So there's a lot that goes on that you have to just put the pieces together to really understand these characters. So I kind of went off on a tangent with that, but I'm hoping you understand where I was coming from. But as far as the villains are concerned, I mentioned before about um, uh, Ricky and Davey, but there's also the character of Jesse played by Billy Blair, who was the reason why I wanted to see this movie. I have to give it to him. This guy did a really good job in playing this really dark, twisted character who clearly was there for greed, but there's there seems to be a lot going on behind the character that you don't get too, to know too much about, but you understand that this guy does come from a pretty dark place. But at the same time, he also has this level of fear of the character Ricky, which is the reason why you get to learn more about the, the legend of Ricky, if you will, especially he comes into the story and, uh, and the way things start playing out, you start to understand why he has this level of fear towards this guy. So it makes a lot of sense. And the, and to be honest with you, Jason's uh, portrayal of the character Ricky does a really good job in justifying this uh, character's aggression, to justifying this character's uh, loose cannon attitude, loose cannon approach, if you will. So there's a lot that goes into that that surely does help out and helping you understand what's going on. And when it comes to the end of the movie, it makes a lot of sense as well. So again, without getting into spoilers, there's just so much that goes on this movie that I think worked very effectively in, for this film that I think I'm hoping that people will come to enjoy, walk away, give something to think about, and hopefully to really connect with the characters in some way or shape or form, and then go on with your day. So as for my negatives, the real negative that I have with this movie, uh, believe it or not, actually has to do with the fact that it's not that the film is slow and it's not that the film is boring. It's not that there there's so much that goes on as far as like the the characters uh, arc, if you will, that I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of that with these characters. But again, Derek and everyone else involved in making this movie do a really good job to set the tone and give you enough for you to connect with and understand these characters journey that you don't really require too much uh, to, uh, to have to spend time with them. It's just enough and more than enough in some cases for you to really get where they're coming from, especially when it comes on with the, the events that unfold later on in the movie. But I do think that, I don't know, maybe it's just my taste because uh, usually this doesn't this wouldn't be a, a thing for me, but something about the way that the film is paced in certain scenes that work a little too slow for my taste. But that's not a bad thing. I think that's a conscious decision that, that the, the director had made to purposely tell that story that way. But it just happened to be in certain scenes. And again, with the scenes that I'm talking about, I don't want to get into because it'll be in that spoiler territory. But there were moments where I felt like it could have just picked up a little bit more. And there's actually one particular scene where I guess you can consider to be the action scene which, where, where a shootout occurs. Uh, again, without getting into spoilers here. But that was one of the most tense scenes and I would have liked to have seen a lot more of that, especially when it came to the end. That's really my biggest negative with the movie because that particular setup with that scene uh, in that in that shootout scene that occurs, and I would say in the halfway point, um, I would have loved to have that at the end of the movie. Again, without really getting into spoilers, it's, it's hard for me to try to 
to really t tell you my thoughts, but not reveal anything for you. So I'll hopefully that does it. I hope I give you enough context about what it is that I was looking for in the movie after seeing it again because I saw the movie twice. So when you guys do watch the film, hopefully you guys will come to enjoy it. Hopefully as much as I did, if not more. Again, without repeating myself, that's pretty much it right there with my overall thoughts on the film. So let's get into my rating. So as I said before, I really like this movie. This is a film that I would go back and watch again. Not a film that I would go back and watch again on a day-to-day -day basis because this is a very heavy movie and it's a very... It has a really dark overtone, so I have to be in the right mood to really want to watch the film. But if someone were to watch it right now and they were watching for the first time, I would sit down and watch it with them just to see what the reaction is, but also just to enjoy the film for what it is as well, too, because it is a really good film, very well acted. I thought it had done a lot of great things in terms of the uh, in the broad scope of the uh, things as far as the, the the look of the film giving it a much more bigger feel to because obviously you can tell this is a very low budget movie but it never felt that way at all in fact it felt a lot superior in, in other areas that i think that a lot of mainstream movies were lacking in this movie certainly has exceeded in other than the ending in my opinion but overall great movie i did enjoy a great deal so i would give this movie a raise the glass <laughs> And those are my thoughts on the movie. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts when you guys check out the film when it gets released on October 19th on digital, VOD, and also on DVD. So make sure you also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And also make sure you share and like our videos and hit that notification bell while you're down there. Follow us on our social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook on new release Wednesdays and on Twitter at DNRW. Follow me on my social media accounts on Instagram, Rob underscore Medina0585, on Twitter, Rob Medina0585, and on Facebook, simply just Rob Medina. I also have a show on the channel here called You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and we also have a social media account for that show as well. On Instagram, You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and on Twitter, You're So Cool WRM. And I thank you all very much for joining me here today. I hope you guys enjoy this review, and until next time, everybody, you guys stay safe out there, and cheers. <laughs>